Well, here we go, man. We're chilling with Larry Megan. We're back on the air. You know, we're testing things out tonight. A little webcast here from Chanhassen, Minnesota. You know, um, I did, what, 17 of these uh, Chilling with Larry Megan webcasts last year from Port Chester, New York. And, you know, it was a lot of fun. I was enjoying doing it. And, um, you know, that situation was really, really cool because, uh, you know, I had those boys at Zadalza. Uh, I call them my boys, but, you know, Frankie and Ant and everything. And, you know, we're going to tie this into those guys again this year. But anyway, they had a beautiful little webcast studio with like three, four cameras and all the engineering all set up. All I had to do was just kind of know what I wanted to, you know, talk about, go in, sit down and go, you know, very easy to do. And, you know, here I don't have those guys. I don't have that little setup here. So what I've done is I've set up things here in my office, you know, I've been spending money like a drunken sailor here, you know, uh, buying, you know, webcams and microphones and, you know, mic arms and uh, software and sound boards, mixing boards and, you know, just uh, crazy and trying to learn, uh, you know, how to do this myself. I've got my engineer, Ronnie, over here. He's been helping me out uh, trying to figure all this out. So this is nothing more than a little test that we're running tonight. Um, I'm going to try and make the first official, you know, chilling with Larry Megan show, you know, maybe next Wednesday night. We'll try and make, you know, Wednesday nights a regular gig here, uh, you know, 10 o'clock central, 11 o'clock Eastern, like we were doing last year. But, um, tonight I just kind of wanted to test the equipment. We're going to get the lighting all good and get a little background and maybe a couple more cameras. And I'm going to bring in some of my guests, you know, when friends of mine like wing are in town or Stan from deep blue and you know, Tim and a few other guys, you know, Mike Davis, maybe when, if he wants to come over, you know, we'll get a mic in his hand and, you know, some other people that I know and some guys that you may know too, but, um, we'll get all that going, but this is going to be the first test. And I thought what I'd talk about, you know, if we're going to do a test, right, I need something to talk about. Right. So I thought what I do is, um, talk about something that I'm really kind of into right now. And, uh, I'll tell you what I'm into. Although I got to tell you, I did lose a little bit of interest, uh, last night or was it two nights ago it was two nights ago now tuesday night i'm into the x factor i've been watching this show i love these singing competitions the voice american idol i uh, didn't get too much into america's got talent to be honest but you know simon cal has always been uh, you know one of my favorites until tuesday night he literally chopped off you know uh three of my favorite girls um i had all three of these girls in the final final four and he cut all three of them I did have Drew Reinowitz, and he did take Drew, the little 14-year-old from, you know, Chino Valley, Arizona. I think she's terrific, and I hope she, you know, comes and wins this thing. Although I will be pulling for Paula's groups now that, you know, Simon really messed up the girls' category here. But in any case, um, you know, if you're watching The X Factor, uh, then by all means, you know, uh, feel free to, you know, call in, uh, and we'll put you on the air here. We'll put you on the webcast, and... Um, I've got a phone number and also if you've got video Skype, you know, you can Skype us here. Now, let me, we don't have it on the graphics yet. Next week we'll work to have it set on the graphics so it will be there for you. So if you're interested in calling in or Skyping in video, um, I'd love to have you do that. Um, and I'm going to show a few video clips here tonight, but let me give you the phone number first. Okay. You're going to have to write it down. Uh, the phone number is 310. Ronnie, there's no way to put that up there right now, is there? No, not right now. 310-579-2801. That's the phone number here. Uh, so if you want to call in, we'll, you know, we'll try to get you in. And then if you want to Skype video in, you can just Skype me at lawrence.megan, L-A-W-R-E-N-C-E dot Megan, M-A-G-E-N at Skype. And um, just Skype Lawrence.Megan and we'll, we'll do a split screen. But let's talk about, you know, the X factor and what's going on. Um, first of all, you know, he cut three girls that to me should have been in the final four. Um, that would be Tora Walshin. Uh, I thought that Caitlin Cook at first, I didn't have her in my final four, but I got to tell you, she kind of won me over at the boot camp auditions, but uh, he cut her. I couldn't believe it. His, her performance at uh, the judge's house at Simon's, you know, house there in France was amazing. 
Um, he cut Caitlin Cook. And then, of course, my favorite of all of them, my number one pick. I love that little girl from Florida, Jaslyn Little from uh, Cape Coral, Florida. That girl is a major talent. And I can't believe he he cut her cut her loose. And then, especially for what he kept, uh, Simone Battle. I mean, she didn't even deserve to be, you know, really in the top 32, let alone the top 16. I mean, her, her first audition was really rocky. She almost didn't make it through that. Her boot camp audition was probably the worst audition of everybody there. Uh, it was just pathetic. It was horrible. Um, maybe a little later, I'll show that to you. And then she ends up making it. You know, I have to admit, she did do a nice job with, she sung Help to Simon, the Beatles song Help. She slowed it down. And she did a really nice job with that when she sang it to Simon just sitting there in the chair. But, um, you know, I thought that for sure that, you know, uh, Caitlin was going to get in. I can't believe he cut Tora. But let's take a look at Tora. You know, Tora Wolshin. What I'm going to show you right now, this was her audition. And one of the things, if you're not watching X Factor, that they did different than American Idol. With American Idol, when they went around the country and had the auditions, you remember the contestants would come into a room and you would see Simon and Paula and Randy, whoever the judges were, you know, Steven Tyler from Aerosmith, they're sitting in a room and they sing a cappella. Well, what they did this year, I think was kind of cool, was uh, that th what they did was uh, they had them perform their first audition in front of a live audience. It would be usually three or four thousand people there. And um, Mike from Queens is telling me he's not getting any sound. Um, hey, how you doing, Mike? I remember you from last year. I'm getting him on the chat board here. Rick from Des Moines, Ohio is saying that uh, he's getting sound out there. So, Mike, check your computer. Uh, let me know if you're getting sound, okay? But anyway, so he had the auditions being held, you know, on on uh, in front of a live audience and they could bring their own track or maybe maybe the production team from X Factor made the track for them. I, I don't know, but they could sing to music, which I think is kind of cool. And this was Tora Walshin's audition. She's 21 years old and she just tore the place up. So uh, let's let's take a look at what she did. Tora Walshin on the X Factor. Dig it, man. Dig it. You know, um, I, I love watching that clip. I, I'm telling you, man, I dig that girl. You heard Simon. He said, I absolutely love you, Tora. Uh, L.A. Reid said, you turned the place out. You know, Nicole Scherenzer, you heard what she said. She said, you know, you're funky. I dig you. And I can't believe she's cut, you know, especially, you know, for what they kept. And I, Tia Tolliver, you know, she's OK. But come on, man, she didn't deserve to be there either. She didn't even get four, three out of four votes. Simon had to twist Nicole Scherenger's arm to get her three votes. And she ends up, you know, in the final four. And, and this girl, this poor girl is out. Um, I thought this girl was just rocking. I got in the chat room here, Rebecca. Uh, she's from Eden Prairie right up the road here. And uh, she says she's going to have to start watching the X Factor now. So that's cool, Becky. Um, I hope that uh, you will. But unfortunately, three of the best contestants just got cut. And that's just on the girls' side. I don't even, we won't even get into, at least I don't think we'll get into the boys or the groups or the over 30s, but uh, we're just talking about the girls tonight. But again, um, I just thought that girl was great. She took a 40-plus-year-old a song. That song was from the 1960s, the Jackson 5, when I think little Michael was about 12 years old when he sang that song. And she just, you know, tore it up. I mean, she really did. Um just a shame. You know, that chick, I got to tell you, Ronnie, that chick, um, she kind of reminds me of my ex-girlfriend. Oh, yeah? A little bit, a little bit. Um, the body type and everything. Um, that was the Italian girl from Staten Island. I told you about her, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but um, anyway, too bad. So tonight we're kind of, you know, as a tribute to the three girls that got cut, Tora and Caitlin and my favorite, Jaslyn. Uh, you know, I'm going to show you a clip of each of them so that, uh, you know, we can wave goodbye, but it's really a shame. Uh, I, can't, I just don't really know what Simon has got going on in his head. Now, obviously Simon is, you know, he's made a lot of money, you know, discovering talent and everything. He knows what he's doing, but it makes you wonder what is he really doing here? I mean, he 
took singers that don't have the singing, you know, capacity of what he cut. So he's obviously looking for something unique and different. If you look at the people he kept, he's kind of going with attitude. Uh, this girl, uh, Tia Tolliver, she's all attitude, but doesn't really sing. I don't think she sings all that great. She doesn't really hit the, the notes, the proper notes. Nicole didn't like the way she sang, but she's got lots of attitude. Uh, you take a look at this girl, Simone Battle. Once again, horrible audition. In boot camp, she was so bad. You know, I've act, maybe we'll even show uh, her. But you want to do that? Sure. Let's take a look at that. This is going to be Simone Battle. I'm going to show you. This girl, now, let me say this, okay? This girl actually did a fabulous job singing to Simon by the poolside. Uh, what happens is when they got into the final eight girls and the final eight boys, they broke them into four groups and they went to each went to a different judge's house. The girls were assigned to uh, Simon. So Simon got the girls under 30 and his house is in Paris, France. So anyway, they the girls went over to France and they had to sing for Simon and he had to decide which four got through. And I will say this. Simone did surprise me because her previous auditions were horrible and she did sing a very nice rendition of the Beatles song help she slowed it down and she made it her own and she actually sang very very nice but she didn't really deserve to be there here's an example of what I'm talking about let's take a look at Simone Battle now remember this girl's in the final four okay and this was her audition at boot camp which at boot camp they went to boot camp with roughly a hundred and let's say 170 180 contestants and they had to whittle it down to 32 and this was at the second stage of boot camp so at this point there's roughly let's say 60 to 65 contestants at this point and she's got to sing now to try to get into the final 32 and uh, this was which would put her in the final eight girls this would is to get into the final eight to go to the judges houses this was her uh you know her effort to get to the final eight girls Let's take a look at Simone Battle. Yes. Next up is 22-year-old Simone Battle, who auditioned in Los Angeles. When I grow up, I want to be famous, I want to be a star, I want to be a movie. I think you'd be fun to watch as a performer. I'd really, really like you. Thank you, Simon. I bring to this competition something that the world has never seen before. How are you going to do that? But yeah. You take it slower and make it come look out. I can sing pretty too at the end. Mm -hmm. I have just an attitude when I perform on stage. Fierce. I know that it's not about anyone else. It's just about me and how fierce I am and what I bring to the table. I'm just going to kill it. I'm so confident. I just feel like I'm completely prepared and I just can't wait to show off. Hi, I'm Simone Battle and I'm here because I believe there's no other artist like me in the world of music today. And Simone, I think we need more confidence from you. I just believe that I have what it takes to be the world's next pop icon. And that's why I'm here. Simone, what are you singing? I'm going to sing your song, Elton John. Good luck, sweetheart. Don't make a lot of money, yeah. And even if I forget the words, I do what I can. So I'm sitting here in front of y'all, and it all went blank. But I'ma still have a bow, and I'ma just sing, cause it ain't coming to me.
Simone, you didn't remember, I don't think, a single word of that song. I do it. It's not like me. Um, you know, I was trying to do something different. Well, you did. <laughs> you just wrote a whole new song. I promise you that despite what just happened, I can bring it. <laughs> okay, thank you. because this is what I want to be doing every day. And I get the chance to do it, and I completely just ruin it for myself. I mean, that's the best I ever heard her sing. At the end there, right at the very, very end, they, they, you heard Nicole Scher Scherzinger say to Simon, that's the best I've ever heard her sing. That's because her audition to even, you know, get in the competition was even worse than that, okay? She's all attitude. Now, again, I will say that Simone did sing very nicely by the poolside to Simon, um, you know, the, the help, the rendition of help, and she really surprised me. But nevertheless, she didn't really deserve to beat out Jaslyn, Tora, or Caitlin. But again, it's Simon's show. He can do whatever he wants. God bless him. But it just makes you wonder what, what's going on now. Um, just just kind of just kind of weird. You know, it's kind of like, you know, since I have a, a more of a sports background, I think about the Olympics and, of course, you know, baseball, football. Wouldn't it be great if you could go out there in the Olympics and, you know, you just – have your worst race ever you, you trip coming out of the blocks and everything in the qualifying heat and you say oh but i i know i screwed up but believe me i i can bring it i can do better please put me through you know it doesn't work that way when you have to perform you got to give it your best shot or else it's wait another four years well this was her shot and not only this one the original audition was horrible as well and she gets into the final eight and she does a nice job there and he puts her through over three girls that are just outrageous. I mean, you saw Tora, you know, and she did a great job in not only the audition, but also in boot camp. And then her audition at Simon's Poolside in France was not the greatest. She sang, I can't get no satisfaction. But you can tell that at that point, they had the vocal coaches and the, the whole production team working with these girls, and they completely changed their style. You know, it's, these girls are, are you know, they're, they're used to coming out and performing and they got to stand by a pool. Simon's sitting on a couch. There's a piano player over there and you're just going to sing to him. So Tora had to bring it way down. You know, she was still good, but again, I just don't know what Simon's thinking. I, I don't know. It, it really took a lot out of the show for me, but um, another girl that got cut, I didn't have her in my final four going to the judges houses. And that's Caitlin cook. Um, I think she deserved to be in the final eight, but I originally had her as being cut and probably Melanie Amaro getting in. Now, in the end, Melanie Amaro did get in. Simon went to their, her house down in Florida and he, he said he made a mistake because originally he cut her and he asked her to come back to the show. So for whatever reason, now Simon is getting five girls and the other three judges only get four. Um, so there's a total of 17 now, but... I originally had Melanie Amaro in my final four, but the per her performance at the judge's house, at Simon's house in France, I thought was great, and I thought she deserved a spot in the final four, and that's Caitlin Cook. Let's take a look at Caitlin Cook. Huge, life-changing opportunity. I've come this far. I see no reason for me not to go farther. I am extremely nervous, but I have to give the best that I can. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Okay, anything you want to say to me before you start singing? I hope you're ready. Yeah. Tonight you're my complete. You give your love so sweetly to
See you later. Good job, guys. Well done, guys. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. You feel it was enough? I feel it was enough. I feel it was a strong performance. And I think, I mean, I felt it. Yeah. So I hope he did. Her pitch, her tone was fantastic. I loved her phrasing. I loved it when she brought the song up. Yeah. The most exciting, necessarily, but there's something about her. <laughs> it's funny because Simon says her pitch was fantastic. And yet, again, he cut her. Um, I don't know. I thought she was fantastic also. Um, just trying to figure out, you know, what is happening with this show. Um, he did get in Drew Reinowitz, and um, I think Drew was fantastic, the little 14-year-old girl from Arizona. Maybe, you know, this is Simon's way of saying, I want Drew to win, so I'm going to load it up with three other girls that can't compete with Drew. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe that's what he's trying to do to make sure that the one he really wants to get through is going to get through. Um, of course, as I mentioned, and I, I see in the chat room, um, <laughs> Rebecca just wrote my future house. Nice. That, wouldn't that be nice, Rebecca? Uh, you know, that nice villa in France there. Uh, of course, the girls were pretty lucky. They got to fly over to, to France to go to Simon's house. The boys went out to the Hamptons, the L.A. Reed's house, and his guest judge was uh rihanna so the hamptons is nice and then paula had the groups up to her place in santa barbara and then uh, nicole scherzinger she had uh the over 30 group to her place in uh, malibu and these were all beautiful homes with pools and everything great views uh, it was great but if i had my choice i would have taken the trip over to paris france myself and uh, these girls were lucky to go there but imagine going there for a week or so and practicing and living the life and everything and then before you get on a plane to come back, you're told that your trip is over. I mean, it's like pulling the rug out from these, these young kids, and uh, it's kind of a shame, but hey, at least they got that far. But, you know, I think in the case of Jaslyn Little, and we're going to take a look at her next, but and she was definitely my favorite, but I think um, in the case of her, it was probably a situation of her, her stage fright and her nerves. Um, she was very insecure you know, uh, about herself and her talent. Um, but she has great talent. She clearly has a gift. There's no question about that. But you could see her hands are shaking and she's very nervous. And I think maybe Simon felt uh, that if they're going to commit a $5 million recording contract, uh, you know, to, to the winner of this competition, they don't want to invest $5 million into someone that's going to be, you know, too nervous or have stage fright or not enough confidence, you know, to, to pull it off. It's a big investment. And that might've been the reasoning. Although what he said was when you watch the elimination show, he said that she had a lot of grit at the auditions and somehow she polished off the grit. Well, I don't think Jaslyn polished off the grit. It is true. Her performance by the pool side uh, was lacking uh, emotion. It was lacking, you know, the connection and the grit, as Simon likes to say. Uh, but she was working with their coaches. This was Simon's choice of song for her. She's singing out in a yard by a pool. There's nobody there. And this was the coaching that she got. If anybody polished off the grit, it was the coaches because it was the, the, the professionals. You know, I say this all the time. You know, you look at it and I, I always make all these sports analogies. A lot of you guys out there, you know that. Uh, I'm into sports. Good coaching, um, you know, can't uh, necessarily win games, but it can lose games. Coaching can lose games. And what I mean by that is you can have a team of superstars, like let's say the Chicago Bulls were a team of superstars. The L.A. Lakers in the 80s were a team of superstars. Uh, even here in the 2000s, you know, with Kobe and Shaq, you know, in the early 2000s, you had a team of superstars. And you can say, well, anybody can win with that. But not that's not always true because coaching 
can screw up good talent in sports. We see it all the time. So I think good coaching, you know, knows how to stay out of the way or knows how to let good talent blossom. And I think in the case of Jaslyn Little, I think the coaching got in her way. I mean, it's bad enough that she had her, her issues with nerves and her own insecurities. Now you get these coaches telling her to, you know, sing a different way and all that. And she still did a really nice job. And what I'm looking at on her poolside performance at Simon's house was she was absolutely spot on. The notes were, were perfectly on key. They, she hit the center of every note. It still was a beautiful song. It just lacked the, the, the emotion. And it wasn't enough, in my opinion, to cut her, uh, the fact that it lacked the emotion. She got cut because they were afraid of her insecurities and her lack of confidence. Okay. Uh, I think that's a big mistake, but in any case, here she is, Jaslyn Little at her first audition. Now just check this out. They saw her at boot camp. All right. But, um, we won't be seeing her anymore. I mean, that's at least not on the X Factor. A real shame. I, I watched that again. And, uh, you know, again, my heart just goes out to this girl. I mean, okay, she was nervous. She has stage fright. She's insecure. But I always like the humble ones, the cocky ones. You I mean, you heard Simone Battle earlier tonight, you know, saying that she's the next pop icon. And, you know, she has something no one else has. And then she doesn't remember the words and uh, you know, and then you have a girl like this that, you know, lacks confidence and everything. But then she, as soon as she starts singing, she's in her element. She becomes someone else. As she liked to say, she said she can be anybody she wants to be, but she doesn't have to be herself. And when she said that, and I saw this performance for the first time, you know, a lot of you guys out there, you know me, you know that I, I like to, uh, you know, I like a lot of the dead guys like Sinatra and Nat King Cole and, you know, Bobby Darren and, and all these old guys. And, Judy Garland and and so forth and the person I thought of uh, when she made those comments about she can be somebody else she can be anybody else but she doesn't have to be herself was I thought of uh, you know Ella Fitzgerald I mean Ella Fitzgerald was truly one of the great recording artists in the history of the music business um, I don't know how many total records she sold but everybody knows about the first lady of song Ella Fitzgerald and all the albums that she sold over the years. But Ella said the same thing. Ella said that, you know, she, she, Ella was a very shy, shy person, but when she got that mic in her hand and she started to sing, she just, she said something would just come over her and she would just take over. And, um, you know, it's a good thing that Ella wasn't, you know, reliant upon, you know, the X factor or si Simon Cowell back in 1937, you know, to, um, you know, make it through. Otherwise, maybe there would be no such thing as an Ella Fitzgerald because maybe she was too shy and maybe she was too nervous, but uh, she came, turned out to be one of the great recording artists of all time. And like I said, when I saw Jaslyn Little literally transform into someone else, I thought of Ella Fitzgerald. And so I thought tonight on this uh, little webcast test, we would take a look at Ella Fitzgerald. So let's take a little peek here at the first lady of song, Ella Fitzgerald wanted to sit and do whatever she liked to do. She didn't have a big social life. It's a funny thing. Like, around people, if I'm at a party, I'm very shy, and I, I shy away from people. But the moment I hit that stage, it's a different feeling. I get nerved from somewhere. I don't know what it is. But maybe it's because it's something I love to do. When she was, walked on that stage, she walked out there like Rocky, you know, <laughs> and she started singing and that was it. It was her place for an hour, hour and a half, you know, 20,000 people in the palm of her hand. The first lady of song, is that her nickname? Maybe so, maybe so. Summertime.
fish are jumping and the cotton is high Yo Fitzgerald, uh, you know, I, I had to throw in, you know, just one of my dead guys <laughs> every show. You know, we got to go. You know, I'm, we'll do some. On the, we get the Chillin' with Larry Megan show rolling next Wednesday night. You know, we'll get uh, into the classic film zone, and you know, we'll do some of the old classic film stuff that I love to do, and some of the old jazz music. Uh, we just saw Ella right there. You know, and I will put my Judy Garland segment back in. I always got to have one shot of Judy. You know. But tonight was just a test, just a dry run. Not bad for a dry run. We've been making notes here as to some of the things we want to do. I was hoping to take a, a live uh, Skype call. We have a split screen setup, but uh, we'll we'll get that. We've got some bugs we got to work out yet with the lighting and uh, the backdrop and all those kinds of things. And we're going to get some extra cameras in here too. But you know, just one step at a time. I think for a dry run, Ronnie, it came out okay. You know. So, um, again, um, what is it? Here's Florida John. What is he saying here? Oh, that was already earlier when it can. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, I want to thank the few people out there that, that helped me with this uh, test run tonight. And, um, you know, I think it's going to be fun. Uh, we'll try and make the very first one. I'll put a post on my Facebook to make sure that we're going to do it. But right now I'm thinking, you know, Wednesday nights. 11 p.m. Eastern Time, and uh, that's the deal, Wednesday nights. By the way, I'm going to be on Shop NBC on um, Monday night, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, and we got some overnight stuff and Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon stuff too. So uh, I'll be there for Sterling Original on Shop NBC. But we'll come back Wednesday night at 11 Eastern, and we'll get the Chillin' with Larry Megan show back up and running. And 
I think for a dry run, I'm pretty happy. Aren't you? Oh, same yeah. thing. Yeah, they look great. And uh, I'm going to put a, this is how I put a wrap on my shows, okay. Roddy. Here it is. So uh, just remember to, you know, always keep following your dreams. Um, keep chasing those rainbows. Until next time, peace, love, and all good things. Bring me back. Bring me back. Bring me back. Yeah. Okay. We got to get the wrap done now. Okay, Ronnie? Okay. At the end of the show, I do my peace, love, and all good things. And then we go to the... The intro video. To the transition. Right. Transition to the... Story. No, the intro. Yeah. yeah. Which is also the exit. Gotcha. Okay. Right. And we're going to make up some credits, too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I got some credits in mind. So we'll try that again. Until next time, peace, love, and all good things. Chill, chill, chill with Larry Megan. Larry.